Hey dudes, welcome back to the bench. Today I want to check out the work of Bowser, an incredible graffiti artist whose work I have fallen in love with after one of you guys told me in the comments, so go ahead and check him out. And I think you guys are going to enjoy him as well. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips about basic pieces and what you can do to improve your graffiti, but we're also going to be checking out a throw up in here in order to get some tips for throw ups as well. Look at this straight letter. Granted, it is kind of, you know, a little bit blocked by some bushes, but never mind those. Oftentimes you'll hear me say keep it simple, practice the basics, especially to newer graffiti artists. And the reason for this is because they're adding way too much style for their work. And just in case you're new here, style is just the exaggeration of the fundamentals. That's literally all it is. So you cannot possibly consistently add style or even find your style until you learn the basics. Look at this. There is nothing fancy about that. Another basic print font O. Oh, this right here is the necessary step to get good at graffiti. And this is the one thing most of you guys skip. I get hundreds, if not thousands of DMs asking me, John, how's my piece? They got the crowns, they got the quotation marks, but they got no letters. And it's because they never bothered to do this. And as we check out Bowser's work, you'll see how he builds on exactly this base for his letters in order to create something a little bit more stylistic. Also, let's check out the negative space between his letters. Let's not focus on the fill-in so much, rather instead let's focus on the outline. That's really the important part here. You see, the outline of this B touches the outline of the O. This is really important. This is kind of the negative space he's building here with one letter touching the other letter on their outlines. This is perfect. Now, could he have overlapped just a little bit? Sure, yeah, I mean, I can show you an example of what that might have looked like if we were to take the B and we were to extend it a little bit further you know he could have still have made that work now the fill-ins are both touching and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that but for brand new graffiti artists this is a great place to start get your letters about this close don't worry too much about negative space because negative space allows us to actually build the letter structures that we're trying to have right we couldn't have the W or the Z if it wasn't for the negative spaces that make them up so don't fear negative space all that much but something else that he does and he does really well is he he also leans the letter very slightly. Notice how the B has a slight tiny left lean, as does the O and all the subsequent letters. This is a really good way to add a very small little flavor of style into your letters without really doing anything to the letter itself. Now obviously going at and tilting your letters can affect the letter, but when you do it as modestly as Bowser did here, it's not really going to have a detrimental effect to your letters. Also what it lets you do is it lets you play around with line uniformity and similarity, which obviously facilitates flow if you've watched my videos, you know about this. So we have his letters with a left lean, right? And you can see this line of the Z here and this line of the Z here is uniform to this line on the E and this line on the E as well as that line. And because they're within close proximity, they help one another flow with each other. This carries on throughout the piece. As you can see, it happens with the E and the R and all the other letters, essentially. All of this is the thing that you need to learn. It's the thing that you have to get down pat. It's the fundamentals, the foundation that you're going to build your style on later. Let me be clear, for anyone out there who's trying to find their style, as they like to say as new artists, you're not going to be able to achieve that until you learn what I just explained. And that's just the basic surface level of it. I have an entire playlist on these things up here if you want to check it out. I cover all of these things in that playlist. And we get to see Bowser build on that with this piece here. I mean, check this out, this B isn't much different. All he did was add a basic box there, right, which aligns, and then he adds this one. So instead of the one box bowl that he had before, and as he has on the bottom here, now he has a two box bowl. The O remains the same, but instead now he's got a bit of a compressed extension, and another compressed extension. The W adds a little bit more style. It's not just the normal print font W anymore. He's going ahead and bending the box very slightly, something else that you can do to your letter in modest amounts when you're a beginning graffiti artist. And he does it very well. He's still adding the serifs on his letters, which is nice to see. It turns out really well there. Once again, a little tiny compressed extension there. The Z doesn't change that much, but it does end a little bit short here. He opts to add a circular bit there, and for a piece this simplistic, this is actually quite the flair that he's adding to this piece. In a more wild style piece, this really wouldn't be all that much, but for something this simple, once again, this is a big move to make, as he's sacrificing a fair bit of the structure in replacement of this right here, which actually in a future piece, we'll see how he adds this in a different way. We'll get back to that. But now you can see with the addition of small compressed extensions, maybe adding a box here or there, bending a box very slightly is how you build on a letter. Notice as he's adding style here, all of the fundamentals are still working perfectly fine. Now instead of overlapping the outlines, he's overlapping the fill-in of the B to the O. He does the same thing from the O to the W, the W to the Z, and to a lesser extent, the Z to the R. 
Now he's really going out there. And remember that circular bit that we saw in the Z before? Now he's gone ahead and he's connected it to the actual box itself. This isn't always something you'll be able to do with every single letter. Don't see this detail and try to copy it and paste it onto your own work. As once again, it's not going to work on everything. You have to know where to put that. And notice, he doesn't really have it anywhere else in this piece. And that's completely okay because he flows in other ways. Also, can I just point this out? I really, really like what he did here. So check out how his R technically ends right there. But then he does something that's a really advanced technique. He suggests the structure using something else. You'll see this a lot in advanced wild styles, and he pulled it off beautifully in this piece here. So now he goes ahead and suggests the structure with this serif of the Z, because that serif connects right here. These two lines would have connected through there, and that's how it would have been if the R didn't exist. This is also just a great demonstration of how you don't need to do a bunch of stuff to your graffiti in order to make it look dope. As long as the fundamentals are right, you're set. I mean, just check it out. No matter how much style he adds, the fundamentals are always solid, always. You don't have to necessarily like his style, because I know some people in the comments, they, they don't necessarily like some of the pieces, but that's okay. You can still recognize that it's fundamentally correct. I personally though, man, I, I love this dude's stuff. And this has to be one of my favorites, period. One of my favorites favorites hands down. We're once again seeing him do the same thing with the Z to the R. I mean, check this out. The R ends here. He's got the rest of the structure down here. That helps fill negative space, but once again, it's for more advanced graffiti R's. I love the way he's rocking that. Also, that Z is just sick. I love this arch that he's got here. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It looks beautiful. What I also really like, and forgive me for going on a little bit of a tangent, but, but check this out. I really like this. The O, while it's naturally a round letter, he decides, you know what? Screw it. We're not going to make it a round letter. It's going to be pretty much a box, right? But how do we make that O flow with something like the Z? The Z has a nice arc to it. It's pretty rounded at the top, right? It's got this beautiful curve on there. Well, how do we make that flow with this? Well, we could do that pretty easily, can't we? All we really need to do is take the defining motif of the Z, being this portion right here, and bring it over to the O. Beautiful. Add an interior detail or two that it's similar to the Z, and what do you get? You get this right here, which flows gorgeously. That's incredible. That, that right there is like chef's kiss. It really doesn't take much to flow. All you need is good fundamentals, and flow happens automatically. That's the one misconception about flow that a lot of people have. They feel like, oh, I need to make this flow somehow, and it really just boils down to do the fundamentals correctly and flow happens automatically. You don't have to do anything to make it flow. And that's of course in the basic sense. I also, I didn't want to cut this guy out of the picture because he had a pretty dope piece, but we're not really focusing on this dude. Apologies to him. We're more so focusing on him. Now check this throw up out. This throw up is nice. I, I, I love this throw up. Why you ask? Well, because it's got a bunch of really difficult letters for most people. A lot of people struggle with O's. A lot of people struggle with B's, believe it or not. A lot of people struggle with W's. We all know that to be true. And Z's, I mean, how many people do you know with Z's in their name? This is the part where inevitably somebody says Z is just a backwards S. And that couldn't be further from the truth. There's a lot of great things the letter Z can do that the letter S just simply can't. And there's a lot of things that the letter S can do that once again the Z simply just can't do. So when starting off with the B, how do we handle that like really strong back the B has? Well, instead of just having like, let's say this circular bit of the B circle right into here and then we got rid of all of this, that looks boring, right? Like this is dull. What are we doing with that? There's more to be said there, right? I mean, that box on the actual letter B, it's a strong vertical line. So we have to go ahead and, and illustrate this lower portion. We can't just subtract it with a circular bit. I mean, you can technically, but that's not what he chose to do. And what he chose to do is actually the easier way to go about it. But you also just don't want to like a huge block back here, right? Because if we were to go ahead and say, for example, just erase this and keep it nice and vertical, well, now we have all that empty space that looks like it's not really doing much of anything. But we include that line, it also doesn't look like a different letter. And that's an important thing to note. A lot of mistakes I'm seeing new graffiti artists make in their throw ups is when they do their throw up, they add certain things that makes the letter look like a different letter. And you always want to keep that in mind. You always want to look at what you're doing and make sure you're not accidentally turning it into a different letter. So he adds this right here, which effectively turns this into the vertical box and then this into the serif. And the reason for that is because of this line here. It segments the structure and because the vertical box of the letter B is only one box, that means that one box is dedicated to this right here, as opposed to this. So this becomes the serif, and then he goes for the rest of the B after that. Nice and simple. 
For the O, he did what most people don't want to do and he kept the O just a circle. There's nothing wrong with that. Simplicity can be nice when done well. The W though, man, the W is, is phenomenally handled. It may not look like anything special. You may see that and go, oh, I've seen that a million times. Well, you've seen a lot of dope Ws then. Because a lot of people, let me tell you, they'll come out here and they'll do a bunch of wild stuff in order to make a throw up W function. And in th they're, by the end of it, they're doing a, like a wild style piece as opposed to a throw up. That's the mistake a lot of beginners fall into, right? But he keeps it nice and simple. He has nice clean lines, nice clean shapes, and he's able to do the W. Then he moves on to the Z and he does something really different here that he doesn't really have many of the other letters. And it's actually really a necessary thing that he does in order to flow with the B. Because the B, remember, he started off really angular and we haven't seen that in any other letter since then. So he's got to do it somewhere else. Well, the Z is the perfect spot. The Z's got a really flat top. Why not go ahead and throw it there? Then he's got the straight back of the Z. Works perfectly. It's very natural for that letter to be very angular. So now these two help flow with one another. He then has to flow it once again with the more rounded bits. This can't all just be a huge square on the Z. So what does he do? Rounded back. Beautiful. Perfect execution. The R is really standard, really out of the box and normal. Love to see it and the whole throw up is great. If you feel like you still need some more information about graffiti and throw ups in general, be sure to check out either my throw ups playlist or the best graffiti tutorials anywhere online right here. And we got more graffiti content right down here. On that note, I, I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, be sure to give it a massive like and I'll catch you guys back here next week. I'll see you guys around.